Hello and welcome to a weirdly off-center episode of What Travis Says. I can kind of hear that my acoustics are a little more off in this video because I'm speaking against my back wall right now. I'm currently packing up this room to move to the new apartment. So I decided to make this video to show you a couple of the things in the background of my videos because usually they're a little blurry because the focus is on me, as it should be, in my videos. So I'm gonna go through each piece one by one, talk a little bit about them. Now this video is going to be a little weirdly out of order because I already filmed tomorrow's video with this background, so Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Speaking of which, a lot of you know about this. This is the Sonic Screwdriver Television Remote from ThinkGeek. I got this from them when I launched a TARDIS into space. It is one of the greatest things that I own, Doctor Who wise, because it does the sound effects. Oh, come on, you're there. But like I could change the channel just by like flipping like that. But it's kind of hard to make the sound effect that you actually want. Like if I want to do the Sonic Screwdriver normal sound, There we go, I have to do a little bit of trial and error. Surprisingly though, that is the only piece of Doctor Who stuff that I have back here. But if you've seen the video where I talk about the Doctor Who 9.9 .9 issue number one CGC book, that's going on the back wall once I move into the new place. But moving on, a lot of you know that I'm really into Spider-Man. This is a Spider-Man Mego from the 1960s. There's definitely some wear. He has like a hole where his foot should be. But uh, yeah, he's definitely been loved the past 60 years, but He's still in pretty good shape. The color is still really nice. All right, hang on, let me focus. There we go. So unfortunately, a couple weeks ago, there was an issue with the shelf. That issue being that I stood up underneath it and bumped the shelf, the whole thing fell down and kind of crashed against each other. There was a black and white Harley Quinn statue over here that actually, it's, it's over here now. She's right here. She was in a few different pieces and now I'm slowly gluing her back together. Poor thing. She shattered into like eight pieces because of all the stuff that fell down, which is kind of upsetting. But back to Spider-Man. This is a really cool statue. It's just Spider-Man from the Civil War comics and he's doing like a big punch with all the battle damage-ness going on. But actual damage-wise, uh, some of the spikes on the back are broken. Um, yeah, I need, to, I need to glue this back. But some of them I don't want to bend because then they'll snap off. And keeping with the Spider-Man trend, something that's going to make an appearance in tomorrow's video, Scarlet Spider Bust. I am a huge fan of the Scarlet Spider. The original Clone Saga, just a lot of people hate it. I really like it. And it has to do with the fact that Ben Riley was the character of the first Spider-Man comic that I ever read. There was no Peter Parker in that issue whatsoever, and I was so confused. So I kept reading, I learned about Ben Riley, learned that he was a clone of Spider-Man, clone of Peter Parker, and I he, he's so cool to me. I love Ben Riley. Now you guys already saw the black and white Harley Quinn statue that I had over here, but there's also more Harley. There's the rock candy vinyl, not to be confused with pop because a lot of figures are vinyl nowadays, but it's the Harley Quinn. I found her at a convention a while ago, picked her up, and the next day, all of those Harley Quinn rock candy figures were gone. I picked it up right before they completely sold out. Nowadays, they're not too hard to find, but it's just a neat little souvenir from a convention. I try to get at least one thing that's just really fandom nerdy wonderfulness to me every convention that I go to. Keeping with the Harley Quinn theme, this is one of my favorite art prints. It's the Straight Jacket Harley Quinn by Adam Hughes, signed down at the bottom. It's getting a, a little dusty where it is right now. It needs to be rematted and reframed, but I love this print. She's just so pretty. The color is just fantastic. It's very dusty. Ah, but it's called Crazy by Adam Hughes. All misspelled. And now for the perpetrator of some of the violent acts when the shelf fell, my steampunk skull. A lot of you know the story behind this. I was at a biker rally and I haggled with someone who had a couple of these on their tables. It's one of the coolest things that I own. It's just, it's so neat, but it's so heavy that when everything fell, it crashed against a couple of those statues and just did a lot of damage. I don't think that this has any damage. This thing made it out alive, completely intact. Everything else, not so much. Now a lot of you know that I really like Five Nights at Freddy's and I don't have a ton of stuff back here. I don't own a ton of Five Nights at Freddy's stuff beyond like the plushes and whatnot, but I had to pick up the Springtrap vinyl. He's just so angry and cute. I'm realizing that a lot of stuff back here needs dusted, so I should probably do that before I pack them up. But here 
Super Saiyan God Vegeta. We're into the Dragon Ball Z stuff now that I have a couple things back here, but he's, uh, he's one of those figures that I found online for an auction from China. I didn't need him right away, and if anybody ever buys stuff on eBay from China, you know that sometimes it takes about two or three weeks, but he was only like $3 plus very inexpensive shipping, so I decided why not? Vegeta's awesome. And even more Vegeta, there's this little tiny figure of him just powering up and charging forward. Now, this is actually another thing that I picked up at a convention. There was this one, and then there was a Goku from the same series charging the opposite direction, like they're coming at each other. And they were each marked like $8. And I asked the guy who was running the booth, I said, if I get both of these, uh, could we do like $14? Instead of paying $8 each, I was going to be paying $7 each. And he said, nope, no deal. And it was Sunday. And for those of you that go to three-day conventions know that on Sundays, a lot of people are just trying to unload some merchandise because they don't want to pack it up and bring it home. And I wasn't trying to lowball him or anything. It wasn't like he was 20 bucks and I said, I'll give you 10 for him. I, I just asked him for like $2 off, so. I left. I, I didn't even end up buying him right away and I had my friend go back and just get the Vegeta because I wasn't going to pay full price for both of them after the guy was just like, nope, no deal. No, no, no. But hey, I got the Vegeta. Now this is another one of my favorite things that I own. It's a Dragon Ball signed by Chris Sabat and Sean Schemmel, the voice actor that did Goku's and Vegeta's voices in the American dub. Signed and Goku and signed and Vegeta. And it's a really neat resin figure for this ball. A lot of them online you find, they're really cheap. It's very high quality. I got this from a cosplay site and then brought it to a convention for them to sign. They're really great guys. All right, one more Dragon Ball Z thing. Super Saiyan Bardock. I like to collect weird sort of things. So I collect non-canon Dragon Ball Z characters. Bardock never went Super Saiyan, except for that one movie, which was weird with time travel and that whole thing and him being legendary Super Saiyan, but he wasn't the legendary Super Saiyan, but it says Dragon Ball Kai on the bottom. But he's a non-canon figure because it was in a movie. But he's just, he's really neat. He has the tail wrapped around him and everything. I just, I really like the figure. This was another convention pickup. Now moving on to the Star Wars. It's the R2-Q5 little action figure. A lot of people call him the black R2-D2, but that's not quite true. R2-Q5 actually housed the Emperor's plans against the Rebellion inside of... What was that? R2-Q5 actually housed the Emperor's plans against the Rebellion inside of his memory bank, so... He's a pretty important Imperial character. I picked him up because I collect astromech droids. I, I have a whole collection just ready to go into a display case once I move into the new place. Maybe I'll show you in another video sometime. This piece is really interesting. It's a Darth Vader helmet, but it's carved out of bone. Really neat piece. I wish I could show you. Ah, here, let me, let me see if I can. There, you can kind of see some of the detail if I do that. Isn't that neat? Carved out of bone. Now one more Star Wars thing. This is the BB-8 that you can control with your phone. My brother got this for me for Christmas. It's just, it's just so awesome and little and neat and uses magnets and whatnot. He's really fun to play with. Sphero really outdid themselves when they created this guy. Another weird thing that I collect is Japanese video games. I have a whole bunch of Japanese video games that I cannot play because I don't live in Japan. I don't have a Japanese system. I wouldn't even know how to say any of the words or read any of the things. But I have a Japanese Pokemon game, you know, because Pokemon and Japan, it's, just, it's in the case, everything in there plays on the Nintendo DS, but I can't play it because I don't have a Japanese system. Keeping with the theme of Pokemon games that I can't really play, this is actually Super Smash Brothers, but it's an amiibo that I don't use, but it's Pikachu, so I had to pick it up. And one more Pokemon thing, this mint nine grade Kabuto holofoil first edition. This is my prized Pokemon card because, you know, if you watched a video a couple weeks ago, you know that my prized, prized ones got stolen. But this one is graded much like a CGC book, graded by PSA. It's graded a nine mint. Now speaking of CGC, let's get up to these CGC books. First up, Amazing Spider-Man number 10. It's a little worse for wear. It's a 2.5, but I love Spider-Man, and this is now the oldest Spider-Man book that I own. I did own a number seven and a number nine, but I have since sold them, and I decided to hold on to this one because Spider-Man is just amazing, and I need to have 
something of the original Spider-Man history, and this is the perfect thing. Keeping with the theme of Spider-Man, a 9.8 Signature Series Amazing Spider-Man 300 variant. Now this was in the Spider-Man 2 Special Edition DVD case, so to have a 9.8 come out of that when it's packed in with a movie is just incredible. And it's also signed right there in blue by Todd McFarlane. This is, this, is, I, this is one of my favorite comics. I love this comic. Next up is the Michael Turner sketch cover for Civil War number two. This is the issue where Spider-Man reveals his identity to the entire world only to have it sort of retconned a little while later, but this issue is a big deal. It's a big deal for Spider-Man, it's a big deal for Civil War, it's a Michael Turner sketch cover. I love Michael Turner art. It's a 9.8. It just, it, it belonged up there behind me. Next up we have X-Men 94, another issue that's a little worse for wear. It's a grade at a 1.8, but it's signed by Stan Lee, and this is a landmark issue. This is a very big issue. This is right before they became the uncanny X-Men, and a lot of stuff happens in this book. Next is Lock and Key Head Games number two. This is the retailer sketch cover graded 9.9. .9. This was the first 9.9 .9 issue that I've ever owned. It's just, it's incredible. If you can get a 9.9 .9 or a 10, 9.8 is usually the high peak for a lot of issues, but to get a 9.9, .9, boy howdy. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, I love Lock and Key, and this is just a really neat piece of my collection. Next is Peter Panzerfaust, issue number one, first printing. Now this used to be a very, very sought after book, and it has since kind of died down in popularity, but it's one of my favorite comic series. It's Peter Pan reimagined during World War II. Maybe I'll talk about it in a pull list video one time. But I had this issue, and I was able to pick it up at a comic book store real cheap because they thought it was a second printing for some reason, so I got it for like 40 bucks when it was going for like 300. And so I sent it to my friend to bring to Comic-Con because the writer of the story, Curtis, was going to be at Comic-Con. So she had him sign it and then slabbed by CGC and it ended up being a 9.8. I thought it was going to be like a 9.6 at best, but I got a 9.8 and that made me really happy. It's one of my favorite comics that I own. Next is Rat Queens, issue one, 9.8. Again, this is another story by Curtis, the same guy that writes Peter Panzerfaust, but it's also signed by Rock Upchurch, which is kind of a big deal because he's not on the book anymore and he doesn't go to conventions anymore because he kind of got into a little bit of legal trouble. So to have a book signed by both of them, it's pretty hard to come by nowadays. And Rat Queens is just really fantastic and everyone should read it. And last but not least, because we're going in alphabetical order here, it's Wolverine number one from his little mini series back when he first started as a major character in Marvel. It's not in as bad of shape as some of the other ones, but this is an 8.0 signed by Len Wein and Stan Lee signature series. It's the first solo comic that Wolverine was ever in. This thing was printed back in 1982. This book is older than I am. That's pretty old. So I hope you enjoyed this video, this little peek into the background of my videos. Maybe when I set up a new background, I'll take you on a little tour before I actually start doing a bunch of videos and it's somewhat blurry in the background. Right now I'm gonna get to work taking down these shelves and like I said, tomorrow's video will still feature the shelves because I already have it filmed and edited and done and everything. So, hey, I think I'm, I'm wearing the same shirt because continuity, why not? Just realized that. Should have changed my shirt. I'm filming these both on the same day. I just filmed that one first and then realized that this is what I wanted to do this video on. So wibbly wobbly timey wimey. So now that you know that I like to collect some Japanese video games that I will never get to play, what's some weird thing that you collect? As always, my name is Travis. Thank you for listening to what I have to say and you will see me tomorrow.